Welcome. Right now, you're looking at Jazzanooga Experience. My name is Shane Morrow, and this is our very first edition. What is the Jazzanooga Experience? We are going to explore arts and culture here with inside the city of Chattanooga, try to get a different perspective on it, and make sure that we're all engaged inside arts and culture. Today, I have three special guests that I'd like to introduce to you, but the first one that I have here works for the Chattanooga Visitors Bureau. So what is the Chattanooga Visitors Bureau? <laughs> I don't know, but we'll find out more, you and I together. Tonight that we have here Mary Howard and she is the Music Marketing Manager for what we call CVB. And welcome. Hello, Shane. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my beautiful set. <laughs> it is beautiful. <laughs> I like to thank you. I like to thank you. Tell us what do you do? Who are you? I ask myself that every day. <laughs> I still haven't figured it out. Just okay. Um, no, so I, I work at the Chattanooga Visitors Bureau, as okay. mentioned, and the Chattanooga Visitors Bureau, our goal is to attract visitors to come to Chattanooga, to travel to Chattanooga, um, to spend their leisure time here. Yeah. So we market what's going on in Chattanooga through a lot of different channels, our website, our social media, emails, visitors' guides. We do a lot of PR placement, so we'll reach out to publications and say, hey, have you checked out Chattanooga? You should come in, see yeah. what's going on here, and then we'll get a write-up and a list of um, different publications. And we also buy ads around the southeast, so it's a pretty strong marketing branch for the city, I would say. Um, oh, for sure, for sure. Let me ask you this, because for many years, Chattanooga was known as the place not to go to back inside the 70s and the 80s, we're so polluted here, um, we didn't have a identity. Now, last couple of years, we've been called like the best outdoor city ever. That's right, yep. And in your area, you're really pushing forward the whole market in regard to music, correct? Yes, that is correct. So my title is the Music Marketing Manager, lots of M's. <laughs> MMM, okay. MMM, okay. MMMM. And I came back at a really good time because I grew up in Chattanooga and moved okay. away for about 10 years. So I moved back to Chattanooga and I realized that there is a ton of music and nightlife in this city. And we've got all kinds of different music from soul and jazz, as you know, to bluegrass, really strong bluegrass scene, but it's not just bluegrass music. We've got a great punk scene, we've got a great rock and roll scene, a good dance scene. There's all kinds of stuff happening here, and it's been really fun to experience it and gather that information and share it. Let me ask you, you know, we always talk about Nashville being music city. Now we got you down here <laughs> uh, trying to define what we do here in music. Are we close to what they say about Nashville being that music type of mecca? Um, I'm going to be honest. Nashville yeah, is like honest. in a different league. <laughs> okay, okay. Nashville is, Nashville has so, the amount of venues they have there, they're just, it's a, it's a whole different ballgame. But I will say that I did do some research mm -hmm. comparing Chattanooga to other cities in the southeast, like Knoxville and Memphis. We actually have more music series and venues and festivals and events here happening. We don't believe you. We don't believe you. What? I, really? I promise, and I, I started doing some research, we have 16 festivals for music, not to mention 16 festivals that aren't based solely on music, but yes. have a lot of live music in it. Mm -hmm. We have something like 35 music venues, 44 restaurants with live music now. We've got 23 music series. There's a lot of live music happening throughout the year. And it's, it's all on the Visitors Bureau's website. <laughs> <laughs> nice plug, nice plug. When you were doing your research and trying to figure out all the different components of music here in the city, what would you say was the type of music that just grabbed you? In Chattanooga? Uh, mm -hmm. um, well, Honestly, there were a lot of different types that grabbed me. Okay. Um, I, I have really started to fall in love with some of the local music here, and it's been fun to get to experience who's out there. Like right now, I, I love not just 
hyping you up, but I love the Creative Underground. Uh -huh. That was one of my first music experiences being we back in Chattanooga. Her. Her. <laughs> and I took my boyfriend on our second date there, <laughs> and it was great. Um, so I've fallen in love with everything you do with the Gospel and Soul brunches oh, and you. music. Um, I've really fallen in love with a lot of the stuff Mike Gray does with the River City Sessions that Amazing. features just really, really talented bluegrass and Americana music, and mm -hmm. not always that genre. But when I go to those sessions, I realize you know there's a lot of really, really talented people out there. I've also fallen in love with a lot of the local scene at JJ's Bohemia. There's really, really good just rockers and indie and electronic performances, and he does a great job at getting acts that are about to break big mm. um, or kind of have like a, a big cult following. Um, so if you were a visitor <laughs> to Chattanooga, <laughs> We're all jokes aside, where would you be able to go uh, to get all of this information? That is a great question, and I'm glad you asked because right now <laughs> I have a blog called Chattanooga Music. Okay. So if you go to chattanoogafund.com and slash blog or click on our blog tab, yes. you'll see it listed there. It's called Chattanooga Music, and it gives you a weekly update of everything that's happening that week music-wise. Wow. Um, it also gives you a list of upcoming concerts kind of for the season, upcoming festivals, mm. the restaurants with live entertainment, when the music's happening at those restaurants. So it's a go-to source for up-to-date information on music stuff happening. And if you want to plan mm. ahead, I try to keep it up-to-date enough where people can look ahead and go, oh, that's an interesting festival, and see what's coming up. Mary how do you play an instrument? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, in I'm, a, I'm a chronic groupie. Um, <laughs> I did try to play the piano one year in elementary school. At the time, I didn't like it. I regret that decision because I would love to play now. I played the handbells in elementary school also for a year, more of a social activity, which is even, you know, um, that's it. So I, I just did am a fan. Did I did, I did, yep. Yeah, back in the day, we had a great uh, Christmas pageant. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I'm not going to embarrass you anymore with your hand nails. But I will say this. Thank you. Thank you for coming on our very first show. And actually, I want to show you something. You did a video um, that really showcased all the different levels of music that we had here in Chattanooga. And I have it for you right now. Oh. So let's take a look at it. Again, let's thank Mary Howard Abe from... Chattanooga Visitors Bureau. Your job is? Music Marketing Manager. What has she done? Take a look. Good morning, Chattanooga. It's another beautiful day in the scenic city, and I'll tell you, we have a lot going on today. Outdoor activities, festivals, music shows, and family.
is a blue tree. <laughs> it's a really blue tree. I don't know what it is. They say it's art. They say it's not art. They say that it is paint. They say it isn't paint. But I keep going around the city, y'all, and I keep seeing these blue trees. So I said to myself, self, this is what we're going to do. We're going to bring in the person that could be able to explain to us what this project is all about, the importance of the project. I introduce to you Caitlin Gurney from the Public Art Chattanooga, and welcome. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Good, thank you for having me, well, Shane. No, thank you for coming on, because we have five million questions. <laughs> <laughs> what's the Blue Tree? Explain to us what's this Blue Tree project all about. The Blue Trees is an artwork and installation by world-renowned artist, Constantine Demopoulos. Constantine Dem Say it one time. Demopoulos. Demopoulos. Constantine Demopoulos. And he has done this project in cities around the U.S. and around the world. Um, mm. Most recently, this project was in Houston. Yes. Um, it's also been in Vancouver. It's been in uh, London and New Zealand. Um, it's been all over the world. And um, what Constantine is doing is he's using art work to address a huge environmental concern, which is deforestation. And so um, he's, he's really wanting to draw attention to this global issue in, in, a, in a very different way and starting uh, a conversation and bringing people's attention to the important role that trees play in our environments. You know, they, they are the, the lungs that, that we breathe um, in, in our cities. They provide air. So. Um, you He's know, it's funny that, um, and I don't mean to interrupt. I apologize. When I first when I first saw the trees, I was on ML King Boulevard, and I saw them over at the Betsy, and I kept saying, "Well, this must be for blues music. Uh, this is really nice." But then also, I knew I had some folks that had some concerns in regarding to painting the trees. Correct me if I'm wrong. This is not. Paint. This is not paint. So, okay. so the artist has spent two years um, formulating uh, this substance. It's a it's wow. a colorant. It's really a stain, and it's most closely like chalk. Okay. But you know they figured out a way to make this last. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not permanent. It is. It's a temporary treatment. So um, this will be totally dependent on our weather. If we get a lot of rain yes. this year. This will not last very long. Um, the, um, the maximum lifespan of this is a year. Okay. And, it, and it's intended to be ephemeral, which means that it, it transforms with nature. It will wow. um, gradually fade and take the course uh, that nature um, intends it to take. So You, you know, it's so interesting. When, you, when, I, when I look at the project, I think that people don't realize the importance of public art. I think that when we walk around on the riverside and we, we see all these different sculptures, we think it's great, but we don't really understand the connection. What's the connection for you with public art? Well, I think, I think this project perfectly demonstrates um, a more significant role that art can play in our communities. Definitely. And the artists actually enlisted the community to install this artwork. And so it wasn't just him coming, going around and, paint and, and coloring trees, mm -hmm. but community members were invited to partake in that process. And also, so they're, they're part of the installation. Uh, they're part of um, coming together around a social concern and um, addressing that issue as a group and, and as a community. I love it. I, I think that it's so important, even though I'm thinking, wow, could we do red, could we do purple, but I like blue. No, I, I, I really, really take a look at this and it says that it, it stops me in my tracks when I look at it because I also say to myself that how important is this to our community? It's very important, it's very important. And I think that people need to understand that it symbolizes that we need to take more focus and attention to nature. To nature itself. If people want to learn more about this project, and I know you have some upcoming projects as well happening here inside Chattanooga. How do people reach out to you? 
They can go to our website okay. at um, chattanooga.gov okay. slash public art. Excellent, excellent, excellent. We like you. We want you to stay. <laughs> Thank you. We, we want more trees that are blue. We want, we want more <laughs> awareness of who and what we are, and the best way of doing that is through public art. And we thank you for your time and for your attention. Folks, for more information in regard to public art and what they do, make sure that you go to their website. Make sure you go to chattanooga.gov. Make sure you look up public art. We'll be right back. That right there was the launch party of one of the newest organizations here in Chattanooga, especially in arts and culture. I introduce to you the director of that from Soundcore, Stratton Tingle. What's up? What's, what's up? up? What's, what's up? up? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> Man, it looked like you guys had a great time with the launch party, but that was just a minute ago. You have yeah. done so much more. It was a year ago Isn't now. That Isn't that insane? It is um, crazy, crazy yeah. how much you have been able to grow and do so much inside the community. Well, it's definitely, you know, the place that Soundcore came from was from a place where a lot of people have been working for a lot of years. Mm. So there was momentum, you know, going into the launch of Soundcore for sure. Um, but yeah, getting into the major programs that we've started um, has been really, really exciting, been a bit exhausting, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess, uh, as, as, as I know you know, um, but it's been super fun. And we're actually seeing results, you know. Um, we exist to build the music economy, yes. and um, we're seeing people transition from um, a place where they were acting in a hobby fashion, mm -hmm. and they're now acting in a career fashion. And that's exactly, wow. I mean, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Now so. you have done, gosh, a, a, a slew of educational type of workshops. Uh, that tied into educating us about the law, uh, you know, getting us, as my great grandma would say, educated. You that's gotta right. get educated. That's right, that's right. But you also had an opportunity too to, well, tell us some of the things actually yeah. that you've been focused on. So, everything that we focus on, again, goes back to that idea of helping people establish careers and businesses in the music industry. Mm. Um, economic development happens, uh, economic development is just job creation. That's, mm. that's what it's all about. So, that happens when people create businesses, um, it happens when existing businesses expand, and it also happens when new businesses recruit to town. So those are kind of like our three focuses. Um, the the low-hanging fruit for us is mm. right now is helping people to start their careers and launch new businesses mm. in the music industry. Um, so that's kind of what all of our programming is focused on. Um, our Take Note series is a quarterly professional development series where we bring in expert panelists from across the nation to talk about current music industry topics. Um, so entertainment law being one of those very important topics that it's really important for artists and managers and venue owners and booking agents and record label executives to know about, right? We, um, um, that's that's an area that we, um, I would say that's that's an area that we have a hole in Chattanooga. We we don't we have a gap mm. in entertainment mm. lawyers. There really aren't any entertainment lawyers who are here. You have to that's go to true. Atlanta or Nashville that's generally true. to to engage with them. Um, if there are, please give me a call. Soundcore.org. Oh, 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 oh. um, but yeah, oh. as far as I know, we don't have any experts in town. Right. Um, an another place where we could use some experts are in music industry. Um, 
uh, publicity. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone mm -hmm. wants to release an album, do we have uh, what well, you know? Mary Howard has a history in, in publicity and 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 in, uh, in, in publishing. Yes. Um, with with magazines and stuff, but very few people in town know how to properly release. Uh, like say an album or a single internationally um, or nationally or even really regionally, right? Well, How let do you? Me, yeah. Let me ask you. Let me ask you this: For some of our viewers that are watching, say, you know, I have a gift, I have a talent, I sing at church. Yeah. Um, I put myself on YouTube. Yeah. I'm not getting anywhere. How can Soundcore help me? We we, we ask you to ask yourself the question. Is my goal to be in music as a hobby, mm. or is it to be in music as a career? Nice. And I think we need people in both buckets. Mm -hmm. We value people who are working in the music industry as a hobby, who love it, who are doing it for the passion, who are teaching, um, you know, out of the good of their heart, mentoring, mm -hmm. um, or serving in their church or in the in the choir or whatever. But then we also need people who are jumping in and saying, "No, I want this to put food on my table." Mm -hmm. um, and when you want it to put food on your t on your table, um, you really have to think of of music and your musical activity in a different way. Um, you have to run it like a business. You have to keep, I'm sorry to say, you have to keep a spreadsheet that, that has a budget. You know, you, you need to pay taxes. Um, wow. You need to have a, a business plan. Um, so that's the kind of stuff that we really try to help um, our music scene and music industry start to understand, start to have those conversations about what professional, you know, what is a professional life in the music industry? Um, what does it look like? What are some real numbers associated with, you know, going on your first 30 day tour? Like, mm. you're probably gonna lose money. You know, but if you plan for that, you, that could still be a smart business move for you. Or if you have some amazing merchandise, you mm. might make money. You know, so it's mm. it's um, just having real conversations with people about what having a career in the music industry is like. Um, so it starts with that one question: What are you doing? Are you doing a hobby or are you doing a career? Well, let me ask you this: Yeah, what are we doing here? What, 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 what's sidewalk this all stages. About? So, so yeah, we we talked about take note. Um, sidewalk stages is another one of our great programs. Um, sidewalk stages is an initiative to activate the public spaces of Chattanooga with live local music every weekend from April through October. Um, we have had around uh, 500 performances uh, in our inaugural year. Inaug in oh, that's yeah, a, that's a word I'm not going to be able to say. <laughs> not, not this election season. Not this election season. No, but all oh jokes aside, goodness. this um, this right here is amazing because I have seen some of the people that you've been able to showcase with this that yeah. normally would not be seen with yeah. such a diverse community. I, yeah. psh, it's I cool. We, I was actually just um, b while you were uh, backstage. Oh, yes, uh, yes. I, backstage. Was showed, I was I was showing Mary Howard. Mary Howard is really really involved in the inception of Sidewalk Stages. She in fact wrote basically the first draft of the entire business plan for Sidewalk Stages. So I owe a lot to Mary Howard as a, she volunteered to do that, which was Thank amazing. You, Mary Howard. Thanks, Thank Mary you. Howard. Um, anyway, uh, I was just showing her a photo. We have an agreement with the Chattanooga Airport now, where we have Sidewalk Stages performers in the airport every Friday um, from two to four generally and last week we had a performer who brought a sitar from East India and another performer who came with him and and had a uh, harmonium who wow. who would ever see a sitar like a really nice sitar mm. and a harmonium um, in a public space in Chattanooga you know f playing for tips right well the funny part but half folks don't even know what a sitar is if you know what a sitar is I want you to reach out to me, info at jazzanuga.org. Info at jazzanuga.org. If you know what a sitar is, we got a gift for you. I, I, I have a so, feeling that folks don't know because I didn't know until you showed me. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, I digress. Yeah. No, I mean, but that's, I mean, so we have a, we have a didgeridoo play. We actually have two didgeridoo players who are part of, that's and if you know what a didgeridoo, crazy. you can call me and I got a gift for you. Uh, I like you got a gift, stuff. you get a gift, you get a gift. <laughs> yeah, but we, we have extremely diverse um, offerings with Sidewalk Stages. Yeah, yeah. It's been really cool because part of our mission is to help Chattanoogans to um, brand this city as a great music city, mm. you know, um, and part of you know part of the way that you do that is you help the public to engage with local performers more often. Mm -hmm. And when they're able to do that in the streets, whether it's downtown, whether it's at the malls, whether it's at the airport, um, you know, 
that just helps us to understand we have some seriously talented people here. We do. And we really do. it also encourages our community to support those people with tips. So if you see a sidewalk stages performer, or any street performer for that matter, um, pull a dollar out. Nothing wrong with pulling out a dollar. It's, it's quality of life, you know? Uh, um, and these people are working for tips. So um, Now you talk about talent. Yeah. What a lot of folks don't know is that this young man right here is amazing in regard to the talent that he has. I, if, I'm going to put you on the spot. I want you to play something. Better yet, I want you to play and sing something. Show the folks that you got a little <coughs> talent. Show the people uh, sure. that you can do something <laughs> with that dog on guitar. All right, let's do it. Sailing away, my own true love I'm sailing away in the morning Is there something I can send you from across the sea? From the place where I'll be going Nothing you can send me, my own true love There's nothing I'm wishing to be owning Just carry yourself back to me unspoiled From across that lonesome ocean I thought you might want something fine Made of silver or of golden Either from the mountains of Madrid Or the coast of Barcelona If I had the stars of the darkest night Diamonds from the deepest ocean I'd forsake them all for your sweet, sweet kiss That's all I'm wishing to be owning Oh, but I thought you might want something fine And it's only that I'm asking Is there something I can send you to remember me by? And make your time more easy passing Well, how can you ask me again? It only brings me sorrow All the same thing I'd want today I would want again tomorrow This has been the Jazz New Experience. My name is Shane Morrow. Thank you. Until next time. This has been the Jazz New Experience. This it's Chattanooga. This is art. This is culture. This is us. So until next time, make sure that every day is a bright day. Take care. Nice.